All right, hello everybody. This is Alan Fine. I'm here with Barbara Muckerman, who is the uh, Chief Marketing Officer of Silver Seas. We have Adam Sachs, who's the Director of SALT, which we're gonna talk about. And we have Mark Conroy, who is the Managing Director of Americas. Again, Silver Seas, and this is Insider Travel Report. You've been having a number of these SALT things. Tell us about it. So SALT is the last addition to the amazing enrichment that Silver Sea Red is doing. Uh, when looking at our demographic, we realize that food, but mostly the way food really helps getting under the skin of a destination, was key to our guests. So we had this strange idea of hiring an advertisement, you know, an editor of a magazine. <laughs> this guy over here. Right, right. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> the, this guy over here, yeah, you yeah. know, as um, as the master storyteller mm -hmm. and director of the Salt Project. So, what's the Salt Project, Adam? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So, Salt is an acronym that stands for Sea and Land Taste, and the idea is just to, it's very simple in concept and 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 complicated in, in execution. But the idea is to simply connect people to the uh, where they are in the world where they're traveling what they're seeing outside uh, the ship and what they're seeing when they, they when they pull into a port uh, through through the lens of food, through the lens of food culture, ingredients, traditions, rituals, wine, a everything. It's, it's just a way to really feel like you've been to a place. But it's a real deep dive, more yeah. than we're used to. Yeah, I think, you know, there's... You can always go to a market and taste some cheese and go back or have a, a lovely meal with a view and you go back and you yeah, it was nice but it doesn't connect you don't know why you're there why is the food cooked that way or why why is that that restaurant that way and one two towns over or two villages over it, it is different and i think when you when you go somewhere and you really learn about okay how how is this food made why who are the people making it what are the traditions that got us there that's when you you come back and you come away with more than a memory of just a nice meal you come back with a real appreciation of of the place the food is also a way to understand a culture in that uh, the foods they make is a solution to a problem it's what what they have access to and what they and so by by delving into that you really that's what you're saying you really begin to understand the culture absolutely i mean you look at uh, you know the italian idea of cucina povero or you know food food that comes from from need or you have you have food that that's uh, you know avant-garde and it's happening not because they have to eat that way but, but they're able to pull influence from all over the world both those things are interesting this can be high low it can be old it can be new it's all about eating something that that is distinct to the place i think the thing that we want to avoid the thing we're at war with <laughs> if we use it sound uh, negative is that we're against boringness right. and we're against sort of generic international fancy food Generic international fancy food is fine, but you can get it anywhere. Why, why go all the way across the world? It's, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of fuel, I imagine, in these ships uh, to get there. You're there. You're, you're there for a short period of time. You, 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 you went to the trouble to get there. Taste something that, that's, that's real. Now, this is... How do you make this all happen, Mark? Well, first of all, I, I want to say that uh, this is something customers have been asking for forever. You know, we'll be in South America and they say, why don't we have more South American food? Why don't we have more South American wine? We'll be in India and they say, you know, we do put Indian chefs on board, but we're in Indonesia, we're in the Philippines, and we don't typically, you know, one of the things that makes the cruise industry successful is the repetitive nature of what we do because of the fact that we have so many records and so and we're so well run that we know that, for instance, if we have lobster and steak and, and, a, and a veal chop and a duck on the menu, how many people are going to order each of those? So now what's going to happen is we're going to go outside of our comfort level because not only the preparation I don't I have, I have no concern for because we've got some amazing chefs and we're going to have this, the help of Adam to kind of figure out this process and introduce us to local chefs. But you, you don't know how many puffer fish you're going to need one night. Exactly. You don't know <laughs> and where you're going to get them. And, you know, it's not like we're serving 10 people. We're serving 600 people or 300 people or 200 people. So it's, it has to be well thought out and planned. And I think part of this is exciting because of the fact that you know, our, our ownership with, and our relationship with Royal Caribbean, they're, they're a logistically amazing company, and they're going to help us source all these items that we need in order to make it work. But I think people are, are really going to really love the fact that we're taking this chance because nobody does it. That's good. That's good. Well, we've tasted a lot of fine foods today. Thank you for that. Anything else you want to tell our 
over 90,000 travel advisors who are watching? Well, we hope that you're all going to grow so much with us. We have the silver arch. Well, you will grow here. <laughs> <laughs> that for sure, but also in passengers and guests. I mean, we have a lot of exciting new ships coming, and so we look forward to seeing you on board of our ships and seeing your customers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.